Hello, my name is Reagan, and welcome to the Twisted States podcast. Thank you for joining us for episode 16 of Twisted States, where we take a look state by state at some of America's most nefarious killers, elusive cryptids, and bizarre mysteries. So on this episode, we're going to take a trip down south to Alabama. Alabama was the 22nd state to join the Union and did so on December 14th of 1819. Alabama is a southeastern U.S. state bordered by the states of Tennessee to the north, Georgia to the east, Florida to the south, and Mississippi to the west. The state extends south all the way to the Gulf of Mexico and ranges in elevation from sea level at Mobile Bay to more than 2,000 feet in the northeast, with its highest point being Mount Chia at 2,413 feet. Our topic of today's episode is one, Nanny Doss. So without further ado, let's get into it. A little bit of backstory. On November 4th, 1905, Nancy Hazel, a.k.a. Nanny Doss, was born to parents Louisa and James Hazel in Blue Mountain, Alabama, a small town located between Anniston and Jacksonville. In 1912, at seven years old, Nancy suffered a head injury on a train when it stopped suddenly, and this would lead to a lifelong issue with headaches and issues she later blamed for many of her actions. Horrible, unforgivable actions that put her in a place of criminal infamy. As a child, Nanny would often look at romance magazines that belonged to her mother and daydream of finding that perfect, perfect partner and having that perfect life. Her childhood was one where she didn't have a lot of freedom and her father ruled over his children under a very strict thumb. So once, once Nanny was able to get out and get away from all of that, uh, she took she took the first opportunity she could. Uh, in 1921, at 16 years of age, Nanny would seek employment at the Linden Thread Company in Anniston, and this is where she met her first husband, Charles Braggs. In 1922, the couple were joined in holy matrimony. Once married, they quickly started having children. By 1926, they had four. Things weren't going so well for Nanny and Charles. With Nanny's fixation with romance, she always had this unrealistic reality of what it meant to be in a relationship and what love really was and what it meant and how it, how it functioned and how it worked. So as soon as things started going downhill in her relationship with her husband, which wasn't even really going downhill, I think. I think they were just kind of settling in, getting past the the honeymoon phase. Um, things things started getting getting rough, getting bad, and uh, everything finally came to the head one sunny morning. The two middle children got up, getting ready for school, ate breakfast, and died suddenly. And this was during the fifth year of Charles and Nanny's marriage. Shortly after this occurred, someone reached out anonymously to Charles and warned him not to eat anything that his wife cooked for him. Shocked and spooked by this warning and the sudden loss of his two children, Charles left, taking their eldest daughter Melvina with them, but leaving their youngest child Florian with her mother. By 1928, the divorce would be final. Later that year, Rags would find a new love interest and bring Melvina back to stay with her mother. Nancy and her two daughters moved back in with her parents, and she would find work in a local cotton mill. Not wasting any time getting back to her search for romance, Doss's Lonely Hearts column obsession would pay off, and she would meet and marry husband number two, Frank Harrelson, a Jacksonville resident shortly before the end of 1929. Frank 
unfortunately, was a violent alcoholic. And this became very apparent early in the relationship. But Nanny continued to hang in there, made the best of things for several years uh, until 1945. And then once again, here we go. It seems that at this point, her murderous nature seemed to bubble up once again to the surface, first by murdering her granddaughter with a hat pin in the hospital that year, then asphyxiating her two-year-old grandson, Robert, on July 7th, once again of 1945. She was even brazen enough to collect a $500 life insurance policy she had taken out on him just a few months earlier. Her marriage to Frank would last 16 years until one day he was out drinking with a friend and when he came home, he forced himself on Nanny Doss. Nanny went out to the yard the next day and poured rat poison into Frank's moonshine bottles that he had buried in the yard. Frank passed away on September 15th of 1945 from what was assumed to be food poisoning or some other ailment. Nothing was questioned at the time. No one was even remotely concerned that there may have been foul play. Nanny once again took to the Lonely Hearts columns looking for this seemingly unattainable perfect fairy tale romance and managed to reel in one Artie Lanning. Married once again in August of 1947. It took a much shorter two and a half years before things would start to unravel. Lanning died of what was presumed to be heart failure in 1950. After Lanning was laid to rest, his sister inherited the home the couple was living in. So, of course, it mysteriously burned down. And Nanny managed to find a way to get her hands on some of the insurance money. During this series of events, Nanny was caring for Lanning's mother due to a broken hip. And she passed away in her sleep. Still writing the delusion. And uh, possibly once again getting by with cold-blooded murder. Doss quickly went right back to work, lining up a new suitor using a dating service called the Diamond Circle Club to secure her next victim. Richard L. Morton of Jamestown, North Carolina, was no alcoholic and was not physically abusive. Shortly after their marriage, in October of 1952, Doss's mother, Lou, moved in with the couple after her husband's death and died suddenly after complaining of stomach pains. Three days after Lou's death, Morton, whom Nanny had discovered was a womanizer and was having an affair with his ex, died after drinking a thermos full of arsenic-spiked coffee. Nanny immediately set out once again, and this time she set her sights on one Samuel Doss. The two were married in June of 1953. Sam was frugal, boring, fiscally responsible, and easily convinced to take out two considerable life insurance policies. Within weeks of doing so, Mr. Doss started complaining of stomach issues. Due to, unbeknownst to him, <laughs> poisoned prune cake. Wow. He was hospitalized, but managed to survive this attempt on his life that he was completely unaware of. But of course, he came home and perished shortly after a second attempt with poisoned coffee that managed to be successful. This last murder, though, was Nanny's undoing. After being convinced by Samuel's doctor to have an autopsy done to possibly save future lives, it was discovered that Doss's body contained enough arsenic to kill a horse. The authorities were immediately contacted and Nanny was arrested for murder. For the simple favor of being allowed to keep possession of a romance magazine, Nanny willingly confessed to killing all of her deceased husbands, many of whom were exhumed and tested to find they too had been poisoned. At 48 years old, the state of Oklahoma found her guilty of murder. She was never tried in the other states, but was charged in North Carolina, Kansas, 
Kansas. Wow, that's not a state. Kansas and Alabama as well. Initially, Nanny was facing the electric chair, but the judge handling her sentencing said he couldn't see himself setting such a poor precedent by executing not only a woman, but a woman that had obvious mental disabilities. It was during her interrogations that Nanny was given the nickname of the Giggling Granny. Due to her tendency to giggle when telling of how she poisoned her husband, she seemed to revel in the prospect of serving a life sentence, uh, strangely enough. But after a couple years of incarceration, and being denied requests repeatedly to work in the kitchen for obvious reasons, she started to lament that this decision. Nanny Doss died from leukemia on June 2nd of 1965, the 10th anniversary of her incarceration, and was buried in McAllister, Oklahoma at Oak Hill Memorial Park Cemetery. Wow. <laughs> So there you have it. There's the story of Nanny Doss, a.k.a. Nancy Hazel, born one Nancy Hazel, the giggling granny. Thank you once again for hanging out. This is Reagan signing off for Twisted States. Check us out on Instagram. All that fun stuff. If you're listening to this, um, you can also hop over to YouTube. We have a YouTube channel where all these episodes get uploaded. And uh, I will see you next time. <laughs>